Hello, I am Matt Navar, and welcome to the uh, FileMaker search results class. So this is going to be recorded. So let's um, let's dive in. So this class is kind of built with some advanced search techniques because a lot of those are in, are in use in the thing that we're going to be seeing today. Uh, so here's me. I've been doing this a really long time, and I still love it after all that time. I've got all the way. I'm just actually started my third. Claris Partner Company. Oh, well, not just started it, but I just actually got it, uh, admitted to the Claris Partner Program. Um, that's with Navarre Training. Um, and another thing that I've been doing is the Claris Talk AI podcast with Chris Light. So you can go find that on any podcast apps. Actually, best to see that one on YouTube. And I just started a thing called the FileMaker Opinion page, which is also on YouTube. Um, so go subscribe to that. And so those are, those are videos about uh, different aspects of FileMaker that I think are best practices. The free training series, which is this is one of those, are basically introduction of a topic. So 20-ish minutes of actually doing some stuff and then 20-ish minutes of um, Q&A and kind of whatever you guys want to do. The reason, this, the reason this is a class you show up to is because if you have questions and stuff like that, you can ask them. You cannot do that if you're just watching a YouTube video. Next week, we have the interactive version of this class um, for 149. And that one is you bring your database. And assuming we have enough, uh, you know, the small enough group of people in the class under 10, we'll actually integrate it into your database together. So everybody gets the software for free and can get that. January 7th, I'm starting the really big champion class, which is the 10 week um, class. I also offer mentoring and coaching uh, and custom classes for companies, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So I think there's just two more slides. Quick find is a feature in FileMaker that's been around for a while. And uh, search results is kind of like quick, quick find on steroids. So I'll show you a little bit about what it does and does not do. Um, and it was kind of like FileMaker's attempt to say, hey, we can do Google style search in a database with a single field. Search results is different. So it actually can search across multiple tables. So it's it's a pure FileMaker system that you integrate entirely into your database. So there's no extra file, um, no API calls, nothing like that. Um, it searches across any number of tables you want and then consolidates those results to a single page. Tons of configuration and it's free. You can get it from navar.training for free. I offered, if you have questions, I'll offer you some limited support. And also this class, when it renews again, uh, um, you can come and ask questions then for free. So principles of search. Um, I started this whole thing, gosh, I think it was like 2008, the very first version of this, having discovered that there's certain things in FileMaker that are just insanely fast. And one of them is doing a search on a table, no matter how many records are in the table, no matter how far the server is away, if the search is if the field is indexed and the resulting found set is small not millions of records but like you know thousands of records or hundreds um, or none and then that search runs insanely fast so i came up with the idea of um of basically leveraging that by doing lots of searches you know iteratively uh in different ways um, to get really flexible results um and the configuration is done by a few different ways. So we'll take a look at all of those, what they are. Okay, to the demo. So, uh, okay. First off, I have a misbehaving cat. I'm gonna put her out, I'll be right back. She's all sweet and good and then out come those claws. Okay, um, this is a free, CRM solution um, that Chris Dippolite wrote. Uh, FileMaker was actually supposed to be m releasing these and making them widely available, but they didn't. But you can download them at, I think it's templates.fm. Um, and they're really great. So totally unlocked, free. And I downloaded one uh, and I put some sample data in it. And let's take a look at kind of what it does, right? So organizations, contacts, interactions. And it has this thing for searching up here. Uh, so if you go in here and you want to search for companies like photo, you can type photo and hit enter. And it kind of looks like 
you know, a Google style search, except it's only looking there. If you go to interaction, you start and you search for photo, you're going to get no results or different results. Actually, <laughs> here we go. It could, it gives me something. Uh, so I get, I get some results and they may or may not be what I want, <clears throat> but that's, that's what quick find does. Okay. Let's take a look at what that script does. Um, so when I debug that, it's really just one line of code that does it, perform quick find. And that's the same as the little widget up here, which is a quick find widget, except this way it's being triggered from within the interface. So it runs the quick find and now it, it changes your found set. So you're looking at whatever found worked and then has a few things to say, what does it do if it found nothing? Um, and then it does a sort and um, uh, then it goes to the first record, which Quick Find does not do by itself, and then is done. So that's, you know, Quick Find is, is extremely simple. Okay, this is search results. So um, I'll try a simple search here. Now this is the first time I've run it, and this is actually WAN hosted. So that was actually pretty fast. Um, so in this particular case, it only found results in, uh, in one uh, table. But if I do something, I can do different searches here. And now this is actually showing results from the organization table and the person table, um, which is fundamentally different, right, than, than you can get with QuickTime. Um, and, uh, and then if you click on any of these records, it'll take you to that record. So the kind of like a Google search, right? You're not actually looking at the website. You're looking at uh, a representation of how to get to that website. Um, and then I can, you know, any other kind of search, it'll search on that particular thing. So this particular phrase, it did not find in, um, uh, in a company name or anything like that, but it did find some invoices that had that text in it. In fact, quite a few of them. And so if you click this, it'll actually list all of the invoices that have that. So actually that didn't work and I can show you why that is. There's one important limitation when you're using the server side function of this. Okay, so that's kind of how it works. There's a lot of code to go through. Let's actually just take a quick look at it. Um, So uh, this is a, a quite a large amount of script code, a very small of it that you have to configure, and almost all of it's just black box scripts. So uh, one of the things that it does at the very beginning, I'll kind of go to the code that's important, is this stuff here. So data type. Data type is a really important, um, thing because before a search is done, it tries to determine, did you type a phone number in, an integer, a dollar amount, a date, a date range, text, person's name. There's all these different things, you know, that it, that it could determine before it does anything. And then it goes searching only there. So if you type in something that's very obviously an email address, there's no point looking in you know, a number field in a table that does not have any emails, for example. Um, and that's all configurable. Uh, okay, so then, uh, so then, yeah, there's a whole bunch of vari variables and stuff like that. It looks at an operator to see if you put in like a greater than, less than, uh, so all kinds of other stuff in there. So if we take a look at the number of scripts involved, these are the scripts that are part of it. Um, but the only two you have to configure are these two, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Okay, <clears throat> so let's take a little little bit of a look at some of the configurations, and then we're going to actually integrate this whole thing in just a few minutes into this other solution. Um, so if you go to this uh, settings area, this is a screen where you can choose a lot. This is a developer field, ignore that. <clears throat> this is where you can configure a lot of stuff about the different tables that you're searching. So for example, the first table I'm searching is the organization table. Um, and it's called organization. I can change it to called company. 
I'm searching it and I want to show, let's just say six lines instead of eight. And then I'm going to also turn, I'll leave server side on. Actually, no, I'll turn it off because there's one thing I want to show. And then more gives you some more powerful features that you can do. Um, okay, so the next table is the person table. And I'm going to also reduce the number of lines here. I can also just turn it off. I'll go ahead and turn it off. Um, so now if I do, if I save my changes and I do a search for John Smith, um, it only finds it in the company table um, because that's actually part of the name of a company, Smith Johnson. If I, if I go back to settings and turn the person table back on, that same search will now yield a very different set of results. So I found one John Smitherton, right? So that's probably the best record of what I was really looking for. So another other configuration that I wanted to show is there's a special feature for a phone number. And if you type a phone number, like if your database has phone numbers that are entered in different ways, you know, 503-123-503-123 with no spaces, uh, parentheses, um, you know, it, it's very possible that it can be formatted lots of ways, maybe even no area codes. Um, this will handle all that. It'll determine, it'll determine that what you've typed is a phone number. And then it will search for that particular phone number in that particular, oh, I think I typed it wrong. Or there may not actually be in the sample data. Uh, or I didn't prepare my, prepare my demo well enough. Yeah, I think I've actually turned off the error, that particular feature to search that way. So um, I have to take a look at the configuration. But you, what you can see here is if I type it in with dashes, which I think is probably what a user would do, here it found it with no area code. It finds it with lots of different spacing. Um, it looks a little weird because it's using two different searches here because it has an area code flexibility feature turned on. Um, so if I turn that off, would it also find it with dots? It should. I'd have to play with it. Um, so phone, unformatted phone, off. Um, phone area code, off. Unformatted should be the one with that, with the, um, uh, that should have worked with that, with, if I typed it in with just the digits without, so I have to take a look at that code. So let's take a look at it this way. So this find a lot, it found a lot less because I turned that, um, I turned that uh, unformatted feature off. If I turn that back on, it still actually didn't show me a lot of results. So, so there's some configuration here. Let's actually try it with dots because I'm curious to see. Yeah, it didn't. That didn't work. So these are things that can be configured in a different area of the system. Not all the features can be done here, and not all the customization can be done here. Um, but one of the things that we did see is it didn't go looking anywhere else. Well, if I looked at it under the hood, I would see that it didn't go looking in invoices. It didn't look anywhere except for places where phone numbers exist. Okay, let's go ahead and integrate it into here now. So the integration steps are laid out here. And so there's uh, the integration parts are two areas and each one of those has a couple of steps. So it's just six steps in total. And then configuration has some steps. Um, okay, so first there's one table of data called search results, which just has four fields in it. Um, one's a global, one stores your settings and one is for the virtual list. And then there's a calculation. So I'm gonna copy that table to the clipboard and go here and paste it. I don't have to worry about records. The second thing I'm going to do is copy and paste um, or create some layouts, All right? So um, uh, one of the things that that happens here is I need to create some layouts. It made an automatic one for the search results table. And then I need another one for settings. I'm going to have to check the name of that one because that one matters. I 
SR underscore settings. Okay. So I got that one right. And then that's in the same context as search results. Um, the uh, next thing you do is I need to create layouts for each table that I'm going to be using. So I make a table and if I, if the, let's just set this up to search two tables, the organization table. Um, is one and I won't do any configuration of it right now. And then table O2 and it tells you you have to name them this particular way. It's going to be the context table. I could configure interactions and staff and stuff like that too, but for time. Okay. Yeah. Table 01, table 02. So if one for each context, then the second, the last or third thing that I need to do here is grab the folder called search results. So I just copy this whole folder of scripts. I go here and I paste that folder of scripts. Okay. Uh, then I'm on to um, configuration. So um, <clears throat> I have to copy and paste some stuff on the different layouts. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and do some configuration of those. So um, there's a layout in here. Well, this is the main result layout. So I'm going to copy and paste this one to my main one called search results, the one that got made by default. This one takes a couple of minutes because you have to have uh, a top nav, a header, and a body. For it to work right. Um, and it also has to be a list view. And then I'm just going to paste this in. And I'll um, shrink this to fit. Move this up and move this down. And then shrink up the body. When I go to browse mode, this is going to give me a bunch of JSON errors or just nothing actually. Yeah. And then I'm probably going to want to use my theme, whatever my theme is, to get um, a good looking header. This actually has the grid turned on, so that's probably pretty good looking. And then I like a darker header for that one. And then body can be like white. So that looks pretty similar. Okay, the next thing is the settings layout. So one layout down. Settings, copy, paste. So because the these are all based on the search results table with globals, they all just work for context and all of the scripts call the correct scripts. Um, well, actually I like these ones, so I don't have to worry about, about that stuff. And then the next one down is this one here. This is the template table. So I'm gonna copy this whole um, to the clipboard and go down to my table 01. This one's in the context of organization. And that's so I'm just gonna call it organization. And then I'm going to go to the table 02 and do the same thing. And this one's contact. So I'll call it contact. Usually at this point, by the way, I make a one called table O question or something like that. And then I paste it again. That way I have all the template unchanged. So if I want to add another table later on, I have sort of an unchanged version of this. So the next thing we do is we do some configuration in here. First, it must have a primary key. So um, any table that you search on has to have a primary key because it uses that to go to navigate around. The second area is I choose which fields in that table I want to search. Obviously, I want to search on the company name, um, maybe the description of the company, the uh, street address, but probably not all the rest of it. And probably not the status, because this is basically, the idea here is we're trying to find one record. We're not running a report of every company who's in status, you know, pending. Um, we're trying to find, there's one record I'm looking for. I have this little bit of information. How do I find it? That's kind of, when you go to Google, you're looking for a website. Um, you're looking for maybe a small set of things to choose between. You're not looking to run a report of every single website who sells a particular thing. Okay, 
Um, date fields. If this one has a date field, um, I would um, I would put that in here because it uses a, spe a special function for that. I don't really see one here. Uh, integer fields would be uh, like for an invoice number. Decimal field for like a dollar amount if you have an invoice number, that's where you configure that. Formatted fields are where we see this other magic, right? Phone number and email. So I've got, you know, I think the phone number and email are in the other table. This just has the address but no other info. The display fields is the next area. So when it does the, the search and you see the results, what does it show in the list? And so I want to see the name of the company and I want to see the status. So in this case, maybe, uh, and then the city. Uh, Tooltips will skip for now, but this is where you can hover over result and see certain text. Okay, now we're going to configure the second table. Um, and so that's going to be primary key. This one I want to search on the name. Now here's an interesting one. Um, this has first name and last name. Oh, full name. Okay, so the first name and there's last name and the full name. You really want to search on a full name field. So this is one of the only times in FileMaker where you kind of need a calculated field or a field that stores the whole name. I can also choose to search on other things in here, like if this person works for an organization. Um, yeah, let's leave that. Okay, date. Does this have a... Oh, I think there's a different table that has some date stuff in it. We'll skip that one for now. Uh, again, integer, decimal, formatted fields. Here's what we can put in the phone number. And I think it's, I think I only have data in one of the two phone number fields. Um, and I don't see the other one right now. And email, personal email. Hey, Matt, I noticed on the bottom there's a work phone. So I only see one one field ah. that do you, uh, can we just clone that field? I noticed on the, you know, in text fields, you've got five or six. So I, I imported a bunch of data that I wanted to take a look at. So you've got a really good point there. So yeah, work, I think work phone, and I'll answer your question in a second. Um, yeah, work phone is what I populated and personal email. So those are the ones I'll configure. And those are what's there. Okay, what was your question? So what what if I did want to search on on two phone fields? Do I just clone that work phone for a second? Um, or? That's actually a little trickier. So the phone field, it pretty much presumes that your data is normalized and you'd have a separate phone table for it. You can, you can do it. You can also say, go over here and search on a text field for uh, work phone and uh, mobile phone. And then it will search it as a text field, not as a specialized phone field, but as a text field, which is going to work in almost every case. So you can find the same field in multiple different places. For example, um, if, you, if your primary key, like your job number field, for example, is an integer, um, I don't think it has one. I wish it, I wish we'd have a regular integer. Then you could actually configure that one as a decimal, integer, and text, because the person might type it in like, you know, A, one, two, three, four, as opposed to one, two, three, four, um, or one, two, three, four, period. Uh, and then just in case, and even for text, you know, that way it just kind of covers your bases, although ideally you really want to match what the user actually uh, um, types. Okay. In this case, I'm going to show the full name of the person. Um, first, full. Let's actually show just that, and then we'll come back and do some configuration. Okay, um, what's next on my configuration steps? Okay, that's all this part. Now, the next part is scripts. There's two scripts that I have to look at from the ones that I pasted in. Okay, one of them is called, um, I think actually it'll even tell you, yeah, these two here in that little group. Display, navigate to layout. So it, it kind of clearly tells you, um, yeah, down here is where you have to do the work. So it numbers the table. So table one is company. 
And if I'm in form view, what layout do I want to use in my database to go to the company? That's going to be organization details. If I want to go to the list, it's organization list. And then also it can automatically sort it. And for performance reasons, it can sort it um, uh, only if the found count is, is below a certain number. And that's kind of an option anyway. Okay, table two is contact. So there's contact details, table two, contact list. All the rest of them I don't have. Um, so I can just delete it or I'll comment it out. Um, if you have more than five tables, you can just duplicate the section, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I think I've, someone has configured it to like 30 or 40. Um, so that's it for this script. There's nothing else to, to do. Okay, the second script is what does it do for each table? Okay, so the user settings area is just in here. And again, we're only configuring one and two. So I'll scroll down for all these other ones and comment it out. Okay, so um, actually, this is the right, I don't think I do need to interact with anything here. Yeah, this doesn't have to be modified. And in here, it's actually already going to table 01 and 02. So I don't think there's anything to change in this one. Okay, so now let's go for broke and actually try our first search. Let's take over uh, um, let's see. Oh yeah, we have to do it one more thing, don't we? We have to go to the settings and um, uh, we have to do our first search. Let's see. In the instructions, it says, do, this is give you JSON errors, but if I just do a search, it will say, hey, it has to initialize the database. Uh, if it's hosted, that takes a little bit of time. And now it's ready to be configured. Um, so I'll go to settings and now I can start the configuration. So this looks a little bit weird, but as soon as you click on one of them, it kind of resets it. Uh, again, this is sort of a um, uh, developer field. It uses everything's JSON behind the scenes. So first thing, table name. This one's going to be organization or company or whatever. Search, click. Now it turns it on. Lines to show 10. And I don't need to configure anything for more. Everything, if you don't set it, it just doesn't turn it on or off. It just leaves it as off, basically. Um, okay. Now I'm going to go to table two, and that one's going to be called person. And I'm going to turn that on and I'm going to show eight lines. That's it for configuration. Now I'm going to search for ABC. And there it is, like it worked the first time. So that's how long it took. That was, I think, six minutes, something like that. Now I've done it a lot of times. So it's going to take you 10 or 12 minutes, uh, maybe longer. You'll have to follow the steps, but um, um, but but now it's 100% in my in my database. So this one I no longer need for anything. And then this little widget right here is a is a global that has a triggered script. Um, and I can go to wherever in my database I want to put it, like probably right here on the dashboard. What is all that space? Ah. I will make this taller and make some space for myself. Um, let's see if that works. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So he's got some other uh, things here. This one, all the other things he's got above here are set to be center only. So I'll say this one's pinned to the top and center to kind of match the style. So there's my J Smith, Smithers. And then I also want to put that probably somewhere on every layout, or in this case, maybe I just want to take this one over and paste my widget here instead.
Okay, there's another thing that's actually pretty cool in here that I haven't shown you yet, and that is name substitution. Um, it has a feature um, called for name substitution, and it has a huge list of names that it can, it can um, try to fix, if you will. Um, it's not fuzzy logic. It could be a lot better. I'm working on some AI features that are much better for that. But the idea here is if you search for like Robert Smith, I don't know if it's actually in this set that didn't find it. Let's actually set up uh, one of these records so I can test it. Um, I don't, I don't really know the sample day that I have in here. So let's go to this person and let's name this person Bob Smith. If I search for Robert Smith, the idea is that it would find them. And it does. And it tells me it used name substitution to find it. If I type in Bob Smith, it does not have to use name substitution. So this works on easy ones like Matt, Matthew, John, Jonathan was spelled without the and uh, without the H, um, but also Peg, Margaret, um, and there's a there's actually like a um, it defines a global variable with all of the names. This is kind of ugly, but in the script is pretty easy to configure, and then you can you can make a custom set in your database for how. Uh, name substitution happens. I have some way better results with AI for this, but anyway, this is a feature that's there and it's kind of cool um, because the user pretty much doesn't expect to get nothing. Of course, if you do a gar garbage search, you're going to get nothing. Um, also, if you just type in two things, it's going to say I got to have at least three characters because two things is not enough. And that's configurable also. Um, yeah, let me think. I don't know if I have phone numbers in here. Yeah, I, I don't know the sample data in this particular set all that well. Um, so I can try and find one. Yeah, 714-632-4264. So uh, if I know uh, that that's there, then it will find that record and show it to me. Aha, remember I told you that I wanted to configure this because it's not showing enough information. If I go back to my table 02, the display field area, I wanna see not only the name, but I wanna see their, I think it's work phone we said, yeah? work phone and also the organization they work for, which can be related. So displaying related data is perfectly fine. Searching on related data is not. And so that's one of the other principles that this uses. Okay, so that's company name. Without doing any other thing, if I just do the search again, it updates the interface immediately. So configuration by what fields you want to search on, what fields you want to display, or all of these settings here is really fast. And you never, pretty much never need to go to the script to do any other more advanced um, configuration. Okay, that's the spiel. Um, I took hey, a look longer. But yeah, one that's, quick question. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so we found Ange Angelita. Um, if you click on that, uh, does that go somewhere or can we configure that? Um, yeah, I, yeah. Finding is nice. We usually want to take action once we find. Oh, so you mean when you when it did a name substitution? What did you want to do? No, 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 no. Just on on the on the search results. Oh, if I click on Angelita, what happens? Yeah, on any on any of the search results, if you click it, it goes to this to the layout that you specify. Perfect. Perfect. So this is one of the so this is a deep file maker thing, right? Go to layout. So this is the one thing that you have to actually configure in the script called navigate to layout. And so if in table two, which is, which is person, a result is found, it goes to the contact detail screen. 
you may have a whole bunch of different layouts in your database based on contact. Look, I have a whole bunch of them here. So you have to choose the one you want. Um, and that's where it will navigate to when you click it. The other thing that it will do is, I don't know if I have, yeah, if you got list 15, this will work. And it goes to my, organiz to my organization list and shows me that list of records. Okay, this didn't work earlier because I had the server side function turned on. So if you're working on a WAN, this can actually run all of the heavy lifting search on the server and then send you back JSON results, but it cannot send you back a found set. So when this does a search in the database, it actually is getting a found set in every single table that it searches on. So when I get those results, um, uh, so in my organization table and my person table, whatever layouts are anchored to them, my found set will have changed to these records, which means all I have to do is go to the layout and I get to the found set. So if I, so if I go to organization list, I will be on, oh yeah, that didn't work. Maybe if I do it in the same window, organization list. Yeah, there's the same 15. If I do a different search and repeat that same thing, well, ABC, two results, organization list, two records. Um, I don't, Kylie, I don't know if we're going to be able to get to the feature that you wanted, but at least I can talk about it. Now, one of the things that you may or may not have noticed is when I click on a, on a specific person, like John Cooper, so there are 15 records in the found set for John Cooper, but if I click on him, I'm only getting a found set of one. And that's because to do what it does, it actually does a query for the ID of John Cooper. Um, and so the found set uh, changes at that point. But a configuration that we're talking about is going to be to preserve the found set. And then when we go to the, the table, like if you click on this one, it'll actually, um, uh, it'll go to the correct record, but the found set will be those 15 records rather than the one single one. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a custom, that's a script level customization. More questions. Who thinks this would be useful in your database? Yeah, it's hugely useful. Um, Eric asked a question in the chat yeah, about doing events. some name translations. You can actually put all those ones in. So, uh, you know, you configuring it, I, I, Vincenzo and Vince might actually be there. I don't really know. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I put in Vincenzo and it actually found these records. So oh. that particular one happened to work. And then like, why did it find this record? And if you look at it, you'll find, I'm not sure. Vineyard. There you go. So, so it's actually doing another thing. It's cutting off characters for the search to try to like find it. It works really hard to never show you no results. That's a double negative. And it works really hard so that you always see something and that it, um, because if you go to Google and you do a search, it's really hard to get nothing. Um, and so I wanted to make this the same kind of an idea. The, the AI stuff I've been playing with is really good at the name substitution, uh, but it has a long way to go to be perfect. So I'm, I'm continuing to, to play on that. But if you, if you have something in your system that often gets either misspelled or m like looked up incorrectly or something then you can like if you had this for like this example you could just add it to it you could just add that to your list 
Yeah. So like if you like if you did something like this, you get no results. Like, oh, okay, well, that's not that one. How about this? No, how about that? How about that? So basically kind of like in Google, you just kind of, it's so fast that you would just keep sculpting what you search to get until you get what you want. Um, that's, that's basically, that's kind of what we do in Google. So that's the same thing here. Uh, so that's kind of a behavior that I was trying to, to reinforce. So I'll kind of go back to, let's, let's, um, um, actually that's the presentation I want to put online. So I'm going to stop recording at that point. And and then stick around to answer questions. You would think stop recording would be easy. <laughs> <laughs>